don't know how in the world I got there. Oh, so rabbis try and live the text. So, they wore the tassels. Why? To show God's protection and to say, I need to obey God. Then came the prophet Malachi. Malachi, we say. Malachi says, when the son of righteousness comes, which the rabbis understood to be a synonym of Messiah, he will have healing in his... in his... in his... Give me the Hebrew word. Kanaf. And it doesn't distinguish kanaf as wing from kanaf as corner. So yes, he will have healing in his wings. He will also have healing in his corners. Now you know exactly where I'm going. There's a woman who's been bleeding some feminine issue with her for 18 years. Luke, or Matthew and Mark make the point she spent every cent she had on doctors. Luke the doctor left that detail out. But this woman thinks... <laughs> this woman thinks, if I could get through the crowd and just touch the... And the Greek word there is kraspedon, which can be hem or corner. Unfortunately, most English Bibles translate that as hem. But kraspedon is the Greek word in the Old Testament for the word kanaf. If I would just touch his tassel, I would be well. Where in the world did she get that idea? Where did she get that idea? Pardon? She knew the text. If this woman would not have studied the text, would she have known to do this? She knew the text. She knew the text said when the Messiah comes, his tassels will at least represent his power to heal. If I can touch his tassel and he's the Messiah, he'll help me. She knew the text. Understand, if that woman would, not, would have known the text as well as I did before I started this, she'd have died bleeding. What does it tell you about Jesus? Say it again. He not only cares, he said, Zach said, cares, Jesus cares if you read the text. What else? This is almost so obvious. He knew the text. He knew that when she grabbed his tassel, that that was a profession of faith on her part. What if Jesus wouldn't have known Malachi? People said, oh, he's got... Okay, understand, but he knew the text. What else, did you, what else does it tell you about him? He wore tassels. What? When's the last time you saw a Sunday school paper with Jesus, who first of all looked like he was on the Swedish ski team, and second, <laughs> that Jesus had tassels. We don't give him tassels. You want to know what kind of an abomination it is to have Jesus without tassels? That means he broke the word of God. And he's not sinless anymore. He's got to have tassels. Why? Because God said wear tassels. And he didn't sin. It's my way of saying if Jesus was so concerned about living the text that he even wore these tassels how can I expect any, anything less than my best effort? Okay? Say, well, I, I cannot tell you. Your faculty here. Yeah, I will. Are there any of the faculty here? They have no idea how good they have it. You, you guys have no idea what it's like to walk into a place like this and have a group like you that communicate a passion for Jesus, a cure. Honestly, this is going to keep me going for a month. It's a huge high for me because I want to be like Jesus. And there's nothing more inspiring than to see a group of folks who also want to be like Jesus. Help me. Pray for me. I will for you. Awesome. Now, ask the question again because I forgot it. <laughs> ah, why don't we wear tassels? <sighs> Have you ever read the entire book of Galatians at one sitting. It's about the same as root canal if you don't understand the Jewishness of Galatians. There's a huge issue in Galatians and it's not grace versus law. That takes it right out of its Jewish context. Rather, the issue is in the Torah, in the Torah, 
Are you guys budget hurting here or what's the deal? <laughs> In the Torah, said the rabbis, are three types of laws. Now before we go to the three, what did Jesus come to do? Fulfill the Torah. What does fulfill the Torah mean? Interpret. To interpret it correctly. So let's assume Jesus is going to interpret the Torah. In the Torah is what the Jewish people call the cult. And I hesitate to use that word because we think David Koresh. Cult simply means all the religious stuff. Sacrifice, incense, offering, hol ho holy day, holiday. So the cult. The sacrifice system. Let's use that word. Does that still apply to you? Does that still apply to you? The sacrifice system still apply? Yeah. Who said yes? If it doesn't, you're going to a place where you won't have to bring a lot of heavy clothes. <laughs> Listen, there's no other way than by the blood. But what did Jesus do to interpret the cult? He said, it's me. Yes, you need a lamb. It's me. Yes, you need a scapegoat. It's me. Yes, you need a thank offering. It's me. Yes, you need a sin offering. It's me. The whole sacrifice system, people, is still laid right on us. But bless God that Jesus interpreted to say, it's all me. You ought to read that stuff, as obscure as it is. And when you come to those things, say, wow, Jesus, I bless God that you did this for me. So yes, it still applies, I think, as interpreted by Jesus. The second part of the Torah is, I'll use a Greek word, the moral law. Love your neighbor, don't commit adultery. If you, if you take something by accident from your neighbor, give four times as much back. Does that apply? Without question, it applies. We have to love our neighbor. We're supposed to not envy or to hate. Yes. And this one, Jesus hardly interpreted it. He just quotes it. The third part of the law is about one quarter. It is called, in Hebrew, Ma'aseh HaTorah. Miksat Ma'aseh HaTorah is the, one of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Ma'aseh HaTorah is interpreted in English, the works of the law. By the works of the law, no one will be justified, Paul writes. Notice he's not talking about the cult. He's not talking about the moral law. He's saying, by this part of the Torah, no one is justified. What are the works of the law? The works of the law are all those things that make you Jewish. Are you Jewish because you love your neighbor? No. Are you Jewish because you kill an animal sacrifice? No. Everybody else did that too. What makes you Jewish? You don't cut the corner of your hair. You wear tassels. You don't eat unkosher food. You are circumcised if you're a male. Those are all things that make you Jewish. That's the part of the law Paul is debating the Galatians over. He's not debating the cult. He's not debating the moral law. He's debating, do we have to be Jewish to be Christian? And what's his answer? No. Do Jews still need to be circumcised? If they're believers? Yes, because right after Paul's debate, we don't Gentiles have to be circumcised. What does he do to Timothy the Jew? Next chapter, he circumcises Timothy. Why? Because Timothy's a Jew. So the works of the law, the things that make us Jewish, are not laid on non-Jews. They're laid only on Jews. That's Paul. And that's why I don't wear tassels. <laughs> 